ABC's Patrick Rievel is in Kyiv, Ukraine, joins me live now for more on this. Uh, Patrick, Secretary of State Antony Blinken says the Russians are using that plant as a military base, firing at Ukrainians knowing that they can't and won't shoot back. So how bad is the situation there? Hi, Dan. Yes, it is true that Russian troops are firing onto a nearby Ukrainian town pretty much daily out of that plan. And it's absolutely true that Russia has turned that plant essentially into a military base. I mean, Ukraine has accused them of storing t tanks of, of weapons and explosives inside, inside, the inside the plant itself. And so there's no doubt that the situation there is not good. I mean, basically, the risk of accidents is growing. And that's but also not only because of this risk that fighting could somehow strike the plant, but also because the Ukrainian staff who have been there are under extreme pressure. You know, they're sometimes being forced to work very long shifts. We know we've heard reports that they're being interrogated by the Russians. There's obviously a great deal of tension within the plant. And that's why the International Atomic Agency are making this warning, you know, that they're sounding the alarm so, so loudly right now, because essentially this plant is not being run in what would be considered a safe way. And the fear is that this just means that an accident is more and more likely. Now, Ukrainian officials say some 350,000 civilians are still in the war-torn region of Donetsk Oblast. So are there any efforts to try to get them out? Yes, I mean, every day there are evacuation trains leaving from the east with hundreds of people on board. I mean, last week, um, the Ukrainian government announced a mandatory evacuation for the Donbass region. What that actually means in practice is that people basically have to sign a waiver if they want to stay there. But that doesn't mean that people are being forced to leave or people being dragged out of their homes or anything like that. What it really means, though, is just that the Ukrainian government is really urging people more and more to leave that region, in part because they fear that as the winter comes on, it's going to become extremely cold there and there is no way of heating that region now because of the level of damage to infrastructure. And so more and more they're asking people to get out of that region as fighting is raging there. Now, inspectors in Turkey cleared the first grain ship from Ukraine yesterday. It's, it managed to leave the country on a U.N. brokered deal. But officials now say no other shipments have left Ukraine in the last two days, even though that deal is supposed to last 120 days. So what's happening there? Yeah, so that first ship really was a trial run to make sure to test that these ships can reach um, Turkey and then go on to their destinations without being disrupted by Russia, um, without any kind of attempt to prevent them from getting there. It did go smoothly. So now, in theory, the next ship should be able to start leaving from Odessa. We know that there's about 16 ships in Odessa and several more in other ports down there. I mean, as far as we understand it, it's still believed and hoped that the first ships will begin moving, likely as early as this week. But, you know, for until they go, again, it, we really can't be certain how, how well this deal is going to function. All right, Patrick Revol, stay safe, Patrick. We appreciate it. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.